good morning and blessings in this frigid morning to you and uh, more frigid days to come. Uh, we are grateful to be able to be here and to share this time of worship together with you today. And we ask you to pray that we'll make it home safely after this, and we think we will. Um, but we come kind of got into an unplugged version today, as you may can already notice as we share life together. But I uh, want you to be sure you stay warm and that you continue to be cautious these next few days. And don't get out unless you absolutely have to. Not because of pandemic, but because of ice on the roads. Uh, so we're excited to be able to join together in this time to seek the God who's already seeking us and who is seeking to be in relationship with us. What a joy it is to share life together and to join together in this way. Well, as you know, our in-person uh, worship services have been suspended for now, uh, and we will continue to do this live stream at 1030, even beyond the time that our worship services are suspended. Possibly next week, pay attention. Uh, if the weather permits, we may try to gather outside with masks and social distancing. Uh, but that's a possibility, so stay tuned in to our emails and Facebook uh, posts for that as we move through this week. But we've got to get through uh, Wednesday and Thursday first, it seems, because this week is uh, really uh, a bad week of weather uh, ahead of us. Well, we will be sharing communion again at the end of the service, so prepare yourself to join us if you would like to do that. Continue to join us on our Zoom, uh, Coffee with Chris at 6.30 a.m. on Tuesdays and our prayer meeting time at 6 p.m. on Wednesdays, and we invite you uh, to do that. Um, our forecast for uh, this weekend for Wednesday uh, is not going to permit us to be able to do the imposition of ashes, which I had hoped to do. Um, and so uh, I am going to make the, go ahead and make the call to not be here at 7 a.m. in the 15 to 20 degree weather and make you take the chance of driving. And it appears as though there's a 100% chance of rain in the evening. So, But we are going to try to do our service together on Wednesday evening for Ash Wednesday. Uh, so we'll in invite you to join us virtually for that. Uh, also, we'll be having Lenten devotion booklets. And maybe if we can get together next Sunday, that'll be a great time to be able to share that and, um, and to share life together through this season. But we we'll also will share those by email and um, be glad to, to lift those to you. Also, there's an opportunity during this Lenten season that I want to let you know about. There's a study <clears throat> that will begin on Thursday evenings, and it will be from 6.30 p.m. to 8 p.m. by Zoom, uh, and we will be have the link uh, for that in our, our correspondence. It's called Liberating Lent. Cultivating a Spirituality of Resilience. Our friends at the Center for Ministry in Millsaps College, the chaplain's office there, is putting this together and inviting us to be a part of that. And we've signed on to be a part of that with them. If you're interested in that study and joining us on Thursday nights, it'd be neat if you could just drop us an email at the admin at wellschurch.org email address to let us know that you may be interested so that we can be sure we get you connected. Again, we've already paid the fees here at, on behalf of the church, and so we are excited about you joining us and want you to join us all that will on Thursday. It should be a great study during the season of Lent. It will run from February the 25th and through the first uh, Thursday in April, right before Easter. So join us for that study. Well, well today is a special day. Uh, it's Valentine's Day, and so we share a lot of love with you and with others, and uh, it would have been a great day of hugging here in our sanctuary, as it always is on Valentine's Day or near it. But we also, this month, uh, are very conscious and, and uh, celebrating Black History Month, and we give thanks to all of those who have shaped our lives in bringing us to a place of reconciliation and the push for equality, and yet we know in these days uh, that that work is not over and that there are others who are rising up to, to meet that cause. And it's not only uh, that we celebrate break history, but we celebrate those who continue to champion the cause of equality and racial reconciliation. So join us in that journey and celebrate with those who've touched your lives that have made you see that people are all people. And that no matter what color we are, that God's grace and God's love and God's presence is with us. And we celebrate each other. Well, 
If you have a birthday or anniversary, we celebrate you uh, today. And the ones that are coming up for this week are the ones that I will share. Um, I know that you may uh, type in others that uh, are sharing in a birthday this week as we share this together and anniversaries. Uh, I do know this, that Mark Hodges has a birthday this week. Also, Jim Pollard, Greg Campbell. Y'all give Greg Campbell a shout out. He's in the room. Uh, so thanks, Greg, for in celebration of your birthday this week. Blair Ballou, Linda Spencer, Andrea Sanders, Kay Harris, Karen Welburn, and Carol McNulty. I do know that these folks share a birthday this week, and so we celebrate you and give thanks for you. I do not have any anniversaries listed, but if you've listed any there as we are joining together, then I pray God's blessings upon those who are sharing anniversaries and sharing life together. There's a good chance somebody's having one here today on Valentine's Day or around this time. So blessings to you, and may God be with you. If you're celebrating um, an anniversary of sobriety date, we give thanks to God for your journey and pray that God will continue to be with you and that you may walk in His grace and peace each step of the way on what can sometimes be a very hard journey. We celebrate you this day. Well, I'm glad you're here and joined us for worship today, and we're so grateful to be able to gather together. Wonderful. Well, we affirm our faith together, and today we do that with the Apostles' Creed. I'm going to invite you, if you just want to stand, stand. If you want to stay under that blanket this morning, that's okay. As cold as it is, I think that we can uh, affirm who we are uh, as long as we do it loudly as we share together in the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Well, the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you, and may you share that love and peace of God, whoever you come in contact with this week, and maybe more especially with those who are locked in your house this week. May you know God's peace and blessing. my shepherd and I shall not make it be lie down in green pastures he leadeth me beside the still waters he restoreth my soul
Thank you, David. Well, uh, today we come to God and we offer ourselves to God in prayer. And we lift up those names and, and people and situations and circumstances that we want to lay before God's presence. And I invite you to type those in as we're sharing together if you have others that we want to lift up. And I invite all of you as you see those and as you hear these to take a moment to offer a prayer and um, to, to lift them before God. And so today, I pray for the family of Bobby Burdine, that's Ken Hodges' uncle who passed away. I pray for Brett Clay, Ted's Murray son-in-law, for Sarah Ward, for Nancy Alford, for Dick Barnes, for Pam Spell, for Alinda Ponder, for Margie Prime, for Joanne Hartley and Kurt, for Mildred Ferguson, for Rich and Jackie McGinnis, for Elizabeth Harrison, for Ray Lee, for Kit Fields, for Pam Bowen, for Elvin Bobinger, for Willa Dana Coleman, for Alan Trotter, for Dottie Porter, for John Garner, for Joel Gray, for Gwendolyn McGowan, for Katie and Courtney and the Donald family, for Rosemary Luckett, for Trina and Bruce Reynolds, for Kit Kinsey, for Jesse Barbie, for Martha Odom, for all of those continuing to journey through this COVID crisis and for those who are distributing vaccinations and those eagerly anticipating uh, having a vaccination and, and trying diligently to make that happen. And for those uh, involved in this weather uh, that's coming and the weather-related issues, uh, we certainly have on our hearts today our dear friend uh, Charles Williams, Dr. Charles Williams here in Jackson Public Works and the crew that he will have out with uh, roads and water lines and all of those things that we oftentimes take for granted, but that will be an issue in this time. For those who work with energy and other uh, rural electric associations and, and those who will be out if there is um, power outages and pray for them. For my friend Tyrone Bennett and his crew uh, who works for MDOT and troubleshoots when times like these come up. And for all of those who will be a part of making sure we are safe and trying to keep us warm during this time of, of weather. And so we lift all of those things up and we continue to pray for our nation and for our state and for our city. And for God's presence to come and bring healing and to bring guidance, to bring vision, to bring direction. And that God will help us know and feel his presence so that we may work toward um, having a better world and creating a better place in these hard times. Well, I invite you to pause for a moment and lift these names and others and those that have been lifted up as you've typed those in and then we'll share together in a prayer. Let us pray. Oh Lord, we pause in this moment giving you thanks that you are God and that you walk with us. And even in the midst of new uncertainties, that you will be present and bring us through them all. And that we can know of our assurance in your grace and in your love. God, help us to walk in your grace and love each day, even when we're limited to our own homes. God, we pray for those who have to be out in this weather and these conditions and those who attend to trying to keep our power on and our water running and the roads passable. And for all those, oh God, we pray your hand of protection and strength that you will be with them as they do their work. God, continue to guide us as your people. Help us to live out of your love and help us to, Lord, transform our world because of your love. It's hard not to throw our hands up in a time like these, and yet you've called us to remain faithful and to be consistent in our witness. So help us, O oh God. Help us not be drawn into the polarizations and add fuel to fires. 
But help us, O oh Lord, to know your peace and to bring your peace into our community, to our city, into our nation, and into our world. Oh God, it's a large task, but we know that you're with us. So lead us. Oh, we pray it in the name of Jesus, the one who taught us to pray as we say together, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Little ones to him belong, they are weak, but he is strong. Jesus loves me, this I know, as he loves so. Come to me, oh yes, Jesus loves me, yes, Jesus loves me, yes, Jesus loves me, the Bible tells me so. tells me so. Jesus loves me still today, walking with me on my way, wanting as a friend to give, light and love to all who tells me so Bible tells me so Jesus loves me this I know Amen and amen thank you David and thanks for coming in and Thanks to Greg and Jane and Donald Thomas, who's always very faithful to make sure the technology comes through for us to be able to do these things, and what a blessing it is to share together. Well, we've been journeying in Mark's gospel, but we've also been journeying in a season of the Christian year called Epiphany, and today we jump ahead. Um, we've been in Mark chapter 1, and we'll go back there next week just as a heads up uh, for just a moment, but today we go to Mark chapter 9 and uh, share together in another wonderful uh, reminder of God's presence and who Jesus Christ really is as we have another epiphanal moment as we share together in revealing who Jesus Christ really is. Mark chapter 9, verses 1 through 9 say this. And he said to them, Truly I tell you, there are some standing here who will not taste death until they see that the kingdom of God has come with power. 
Six days later, Jesus took with him Peter and James and John and led them up on a high mountain apart by themselves. And he was transfigured before them, and his clothes became dazzling white, such as no one on earth could bleach them. And there appeared to them Elijah and Moses, who were talking with Jesus. Then Peter said to Jesus, Rabbi, it's good for us to be here. Let us make three dwellings, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He did not know what to say, for they were terrified. Then a cloud overshadowed them. And from the cloud there came a voice. This is my son, the beloved. Listen to him. Suddenly when they looked around, they saw no one with them anymore, but only Jesus. As they were coming down the mountain, he ordered them to tell no one about what they had seen until after the Son of Man had risen from the dead. May God add blessing to the reading, hearing, understanding, and living out of His Word for us today. It's Transfiguration of the Lord Sunday, as you've gathered from the reading. That's what they call that appearance with Jesus where He glowed and the voice of God spoke. Always during this season of Epiphany, uh, as we understand who Jesus Christ really is, it begins with, um, of course, wise men appearing and proclaiming him as king of kings and lord of lords but always the first sunday after the epiphany is baptism of the lord sunday where we hear the voice of god saying this is my son and epiphany always ends with another confirmation from god god's self as we see the transfiguration experience that that inner circle of disciples shared with jesus on the mountain And once again, the voice of God. This is my son, the beloved. Listen to him. The seasons of the Christian year give us an opportunity to venture through the life and ministry of Jesus as we begin with the birth of Jesus and God come into the world till we shift to who this really is as we celebrate this season of Epiphany. It's also a season of being revealed to us Christ's life and growth and as he's revealed to be the very Son of God. We journey with Jesus uh, through Lent and toward a cross to see that the Savior of the world has come. We celebrate after the death of Christ, his resurrection and Easter. And then we spend a little time in what's called ordinary time till we get to the birthday of the church at Pentecost. And then we share life together for a season. It also is indicative of our own lives, how we're born and how we grow and how there are times when we need to find our purpose and turn to God, even when it calls for repentance and a turning and preparing ourselves to know that God is with us, even in the midst of life and death, and that God gives us life and resurrection, and He empowers us by His presence in the Holy Spirit. That's why we talk about the seasons of the Christian year. And each year, I'm always challenged to think again through my own life. And so, here we are at the end of Epiphany. Here we are in this wonderful experience that we call the transfiguration of the Lord. And we've seen how Jesus has been revealed to us. How He is God Himself. And and what God has called Him to do here on this earth. King of kings. Lord of lords. The Son of God. The Lamb of God. Messiah, a preacher who's come to preach that God's kingdom is at hand. The one who calls disciples. The one whose teaching has power and authority. The one who has the power to cast out demons. And he calls, his call is to proclaim that the kingdom of God is there and at work for all people who will trust in him. He has power over sickness, over physical and spiritual maladies, and that God's presence is there in the midst of who He is. Here upon the mountain of God, this inner circle of disciples who not only joins Him in a separate occasion here, but also 
uh, with Jairus' daughter and raising her from the dead and once again on the mountain of, of Olives as they pray together. This group gets to witness the presence of God in Jesus in a real way. God reveals himself in these crucial moments and again to Jesus at the cross as he moves forward in that. As they join together, the very presence of God comes. And we see in this occasion that there's Moses and Elijah, the law and the prophets. All of the faith that had gone before for the Jews was wrapped up together here, witnessing and giving testimony to this inner circle of disciples as to who Jesus really is, the one of God who brings together both the law and the prophets and fulfills it. As he lives out his role as Messiah and the one who proclaims the kingdom. The one who ultimately becomes a sacrifice for all people. Offering his life so we may know a restored relationship with God. And so they encounter the living God. The presence of God in Jesus. Peter gives us an indication here as I've mentioned to you in Mark's gospel that they're there, but they don't really get it. And all he knows to say is, let's just stay here, Lord. <laughs> but Jesus says, let's move on. We don't need to build temples here just to, to stay in this moment. But we have to let this moment shape us for our life as we move forward and back into the valley. And as you continue the story, you see that that's exactly what happens in their lives. And so they're called. They're called to experience Christ. To come to know who God is. And to allow God to shape their lives in such a way that they begin to live for God. Well, I'm not sure how you've experienced the living God. But the living God is alive and seeking to have an experience with you. For some, He comes and down in the valley... For some, he comes on a mountaintop. For some, he reveals himself in the works of everyday life. But God comes. And in the midst of our journey with God, we too can experience God's glory. We can come to know that presence deep within us that gives us strength and hope, even in the midst of times of pandemic and unrest and ice storms. We can experience the glory of God because of Jesus Christ. In the midst of our journey with God, we can also overcome our fear. On that mountain that day, I think the disciples were terrified. And Jesus said, get up and let's move on. They overcame their fear to be able to go. Get up and don't be afraid, Jesus said. Maybe in this moment, that's the word that you need to experience from the living Christ is a word that says, don't be afraid. Overcome your fear because I'll be with you. And we'll journey together back down through the valleys. Catch the vision that God will lead you and be empowered by that vision of Christ to go into the world. Well, I hope during the season of Epiphany that somehow, some way, the God who loves you and is seeking you has been revealed to you as we've looked at who Jesus Christ really is. And I pray that through the presence of Christ and God's presence in your life, that you may come to know the power that overcomes fear, that gives life, and it offers you forgiveness, grace, hope, and love. Well, next week we'll begin looking deep within ourselves and seeing where it is we can then work on our relationship with God, the God who's already seeking to be in relationship with us through Jesus Christ. Well, I pray that you're safe today and that you will walk in God's presence. We're nourished and fed by the very presence of Jesus. As we're reminded of that night that he gave himself up for us when he took bread and broke it and took juice and shared it 
and said, Take and eat and drink. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And after supper, he took the cup and said, It's my blood poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Drink from this, all of you. And remember my blood shed for you and the forgiveness that comes. It's because of what Christ has done for us that we're able to, to gather our hearts together around God's presence and God's table and know the very transcending power that God has to come and be present in our lives. Oh Lord, pour out your Holy Spirit today as we gather in this moment. Transcend the barriers of, of space and time and walls and distance. And unite our hearts together in the very presence of Jesus Christ through this moment. Make it be the body and blood of Christ for us. That we can be the body of Christ redeemed by His blood as we share in this world. All honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. It's the body of Christ given for you. It's the blood of Christ shed for you. Keep your blankets handy, put another log on the fire, and stay warm and be blessed. And I pray for God's presence, God's peace to be with you. And may we know, because it's been revealed to us, that His presence in Jesus Christ will give us life. Go forth in hope, in life, and in peace. Amen.